Forbidden Games, Forbidden Games. I am now re convinced Rene Clement invented goth kids. At least the part about death. Seriously, though. Hello there, Criterion 8 here. Number 318, Rene Clement's Forbidden Games. Jeu interdit. Or something like that. Close enough. 1952, 85 minutes of black and white, mineral and French, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, this movie's fucking weird. This movie's just really, really weird. My girlfriend thinks it's weird. I think it's weird. All God's children think it's weird. Except for everybody else in the world, probably, so. Uh, it was honored with a special foreign language film, and apparently the Academy didn't think it was weird. But, what did what the Academy know? A lot more than me. Anyway, uh, let's talk about this. So, we got this girl, Paulette, whose parents die. Um, it's in the middle. They're in the middle of the war, and uh, they're trying to evacuate. And the bombers are shooting them and all that. And uh, they have a chance to escape, but she loses track of her dog Jacques, uh, Paulette. So she runs back to get him as as they cross the bridge back. Then he gets the dog. The parents follow her. And the gunner comes down the bridge and shoots them both dead, or shoots them all dead, including the dog, except for Paulette. Uh, Paulette's still alive. And um, she ends up, so she ends up picking up the dog and dragging it around and dragging around a dead dog, and it's like, oh god, yeah, yeah. So I was like, yeah, this girl's a goth kid. Um, and uh, and she eventually meets this boy, uh, Michel, and uh, he invites her to come back to his place. And they, you know, to meet their family, and she stays with the family, and their family is going through a tough time because uh, Michelle's brother is sick, sick in bed, and he's trying to get better. And uh, they, you know, they, she learns uh, through that family. Paulette learns how to pray for, learns about religious, how to pray for the dead, and all that, and becomes a little too obsessed with it. Um, both Michelle and. Uh, Paulette become obsessed with death and um, trying to find like critters. They find all these uh, critters to bury, and uh, they build all the start building all these crosses to like make little grave sites for all the you know for for her dog and all that. And um, eventually, Michelle's brother dies, and at the funeral, um, Michelle steals uh, his brother's cross. And he successfully blames it on their neighbors, who his father doesn't like it anyway. So he's quick to believe that, yeah, they did it, because they're kind of assholes. And however, he ends up finding out that, you know, Michelle stole them and, and trying to, you know, wants to beat him to a pulp. Um, the Red Cross, at the end of the movie, the Red Cross end up intervening and taking Paulette to uh, a, her a home. Um, an orphanage home and he you know at first he tries to get his father to promise that he will you know if he tell if he keeps Paulette because they've become friends and I guess I think they've you know fallen for each other you know even as little kids the if he keeps Paulette he'll tell him where the crosses is however he doesn't um, at first he prom does promise him but however at the end uh, Michelle's father ends up, you know, going back on his promise. Michelle uh, takes the crosses and destroys them all. Um, Paulette's taken away and um, ends up running away, trying to find Michelle at the end. So that's the movie. And uh, yeah, so yeah, this movie's weird. Again, um, their obsession with death is a little, a little startling. Um, and uh, I just, you know, it was just hard to. It was, it wasn't hard to watch, you know. I don't think it's a bad movie, but the, just the the subject matter is a little strange, and because of that, um, and even then, and it was just like I don't know. There was just something unnerving that I didn't like about these kids, you know. I don't know. So because of that, I'm not going to give it the rating everybody else gives it. <laughs> just to, just to solidify my. My uh, my opinion with the rest of you, I'm giving this a B. It's not great, but it's not bad either. Um, obviously, it was a hugely successful movie. Not not at time of release, but now it's like one of the most you know most popular French films of all time. 
and Clemal's masterpiece, apparently, although I've never seen anything by him, and I don't think I'm, I'm not seeing anything else by him until 620-something or other when we're doing Purple Noon, um, which is the only other Criterion uh, movie we have by Clemal. And so because of that, yeah, so I have nothing else to say about him. I mean, I guess he, he's a cool guy. I mean, in the interview, um, the interview um, in the special features, he seems like a really nice guy. Um, and uh, he answers with very, he has very interesting answers for his questions. And he seems to kind of humble, too, so it's not like a, not a blowhard or a, uh, you know, a... Uh, pretentious guy like Godard is, you know, Godard is, yeah, you know. So anyway, that being said, there's that. Forbidden Games, B, yeah, not not the greatest, but whatever. Supplements, again, there's a, there's an interview with uh, Clément from uh, 1960s from a TV show. Um, a more recent interview with uh, Brigitte Fossey, who played Paulette. And uh, then there's an interview with uh, Clément and Fossey talking about uh, Forbidden Games back from, I think it was like 15 years after, it was like from 66, 67. And uh, yeah, and then, and then now the most interesting part about this, the supplements, are the, um, there is a, there was an alternate opening and ending to the movie, which, in my opinion, I think kind of puts it into a whole other perspective. The opening and ending apparently originally ended, um, the movie began and ended with two kids who were played by the same actors who played um, who played Paulette and Michel, uh, Brigitte Fossey and Georges Paul Jolie. And um, they are, they're like two kids and it's like really sunny. And the, basically the story that, the, the movie takes place in a storybook setting. And um, the boy is reading to the girl, you know, the, the whole story. And at the end, because of, you know, the sad ending, she starts crying. And um, the boy, to stop her from crying, flips the page and, and like, writes a happy ending, even though the, the last page is blank. He reads, like, you know, they got back together and ran away and they were never found again. And so that was the most interesting thing. And I think, I mean, there was something I kind of liked about that. Um, because, because the girl, I think she says something about, you know, they, you know, um, the boy says, you know, well, it's just a story, you know, it's not real. And she says, but stories are real, you know, they do happen. And with that kind of like, with that kind of thought process, you know, it kind of gives the, the story a realistic tone to it, um, sort of like a kind of a cautionary it becomes a cautionary tale so and I don't know there was something I kind of liked about that uh, but yeah so anyway that that was really cool um, trailer uh, there was an English dub soundtrack which I kind of wish I'd have gone back and checked that out because um, I always like hearing um, always like hearing you know English voices on foreign films although I prefer you know at least for the first watch through I do prefer the um, the voices because it's just it's just a little easier the reading the translations you know because these the English dub soundtracks were usually done around the time of the movies and the translations don't you know you know back then are just really simplified for us Americans you know because we're eating popcorn and you know eating our pizza in uh, in hamburgers you know that's my impression of an American so anyway uh, Forbidden Games 1952b Block. Anyway, so uh, oh, one more thing. Uh, Sorcerer's Apprentice. Stick with uh, stick with Disney. Stick with Fantasia. Pa not Powell's finest work. So anyway, that's it for me. Thank you for watching. Um, to oh, tomorrow. Kurosawa. The bad sleep well. And then Monday. And then I'm sorry, Tuesday. Uh, young Mr. Lincoln. And then Wednesday we got Birdman. The Virgin Spring. And then, in a perfect world, Thursday would be Orson Welles' The Complete Mist Arcade. However, it still hasn't shipped. Um, I've put some holds on a few other copies, and it will ship, but probably not by Thursday. So we're probably going to have to move ahead and go ahead and do the next one, which I happen to have right here. The children are watching us. Um, and then we'll probably do... Uh, 
we'll probably have to do that Sunday um, because it's one of those movies that I need, you know, because it's three discs long, I need a whole day, you know, to, to watch it all, you know, so it's not something I can watch before or after work or something like that, you know. It's not something I want to spend that much time with. I need, like, a whole day to, to plow through that. So anyway... Um, and then I went ahead and put, so yeah, so I put a hold on a couple other copies. Hopefully something will ship either tomorrow or soon, soon. Um, I may get stuck, uh, I may be stuck, um, getting copies from Azusa, which means I don't get the artwork, which I really want the artwork for, because, you know, Azusa, you know, really sucks at putting out artwork. Um, what else can I tell you? Uh, and then after that, uh, La Bête du Man, uh, Renoir, that's on its way. That is coming. Um, and then Kind Hearts and Cornets, um, I put a hold on that. Hopefully that will come soon. And then um, Metro Metropolitan um, will be here eventually. We have a copy at our library, so um, at one of our libraries, rather. And uh, we will get that in before you know it. So, And then um, what else? And then the Louis Mal, I went ahead and put a hold on all four discs, the uh, three movies. Uh, Murmur, of, Murmur of the Heart, uh, La Comme Lucienne, and Au Revoir Les Enfants, and uh, the supplements. Supplements, I guess, are all on one disc. Um, and I thought, and originally I thought, I was under the impression that I, that the supplements were, that were a, um, were part of the, you know, a separate set or something. Um, or a part of, all on the, the last disc, rather. Uh, part of um, Au Revoir Les Enfants. But there are supplements regarding the other movies. Um, so because of that, I am... Um, I don't know. I'm probably going to do... I may do a separate disc for, um, separate uh, review for the supplements. Um, but I also may tack them on to other reviews. Because cause the, disc, the supplements disc isn't its own, you know, spine number. So I'll probably... Um, I'm thinking... I was looking and there was like... There, I think one of them was a... Uh, was footage of them of uh, of Mal on the filming on the set of uh, Murmur of the Heart and La Comme Lucienne. So um, because of that, I think I'm gonna like maybe tack that onto the end of the La Comme Lucienne uh, review. Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce Lu Lucienne. It's Lucienne, I think. Um, and I'm hoping uh, my girlfriend may be joining us. For one of those reviews, um, probably La Comme Lucienne, um, because because she's seen that one. She hasn't seen because she she's a big Louis Malle fan. Um, she has not seen um, she has not seen Murmur of the Heart, and I think that's better off because of the subject matter of that movie. Um, but she's seen La Colle Lucienne and uh, um, Our Fallas and False. She wrote her term paper about it. So, um, so I'm hoping to get her in on one of those movies. Probably La Colle Lucienne. I really wish I didn't have to keep saying that because I know I'm pronouncing it wrong. And I know I'm going to get all the comments. Just just bash me. So, Anyway, um, yeah, so that's it for me. Thank you for watching. Uh, don't bury, uh, don't be goth. Well, you can be goth because goth, goth, goth kids are cool. But don't, you know, don't be stealing crosses from your dead brother. There you go. And don't carry around dead dogs. Don't be that goth. Come on now. Anyway, that's it for me. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow for Kurosawa, The Bad Sleep Well. And until then, goodbye.